graduation from Tamil Nadu Government Dental College and uh, MM and Master of Dental Surgery in Prostorontics in same college, Tamil Nadu Government Dental College, and uh, his diploma of International College of Oral Implantology, academic attachments. He was a lecturer from 1988 to 1992, Department of Prostorontics, Sri Raja Muthaya Institute of Health Sciences, Annamal University, and reader in 1992 to 1996, Department of Prostorontics, Savita Dental College, Chennai. Professor 1996 to November 2004, Department of Prostorontics, Savita Dental College, Chennai, and 2004 to 2016, Professor. And uh, he's an executive, he was an executive council member and country representative of Asian Academy of Bossy Integration, co president of the Asian Academy of Bossy Integration 2014 16, chairman Indian Board of Prostorontics, affiliated member of International Society for Maxillofacial Rehabilitation, ISMR USA. Course writer for PG certification program in oral implantology by Indira Gandhi National Open University, diplomat of the International College of Oral Implantology, president of the Indian Prostorontic Society 2007 to 2009, president of the Asian Academy of Prostorontics 2012 to 13, co authored a textbook titled Textbook of Prostorontics, contributed on chapter porcelain laminate veneers in the textbook of indirect restoration, Dr. Vimal Sikri, 82 articles in index peer reviewed journals. He is a chairman of Indian Board of Prosthodontics and affiliated member of International Society for Maxillofacial Rehabilitation, ISMR USA. The webinar platform is all yours, Dr. Dr. Badmanabhan. Kindly proceed. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, very good evening to all of you. I'm extremely uh, happy and very proud to be present amongst all of you. My respects to all the seniors. I see Dr. Sudarshan, sir. Sudarshan, sir. Vanakkam, sir. We are, we are all, we are all, uh, his juniors, and then we have learned a lot of things from them. And my respects to the rest of the people also, and uh, my special hello to all the uh, young and uh, budding dentists. Uh, uh, in my opinion, is the webinar king in Tamil. He will pay Professor Nullan. Pullover Nullan or the Perasri Nullan of the Shulonga. And the Alta 1977 76 and the Galatlam Padina, the DDT will have gone there. Pur Munutam will bear Okan the Gamari, Okan the Alaga, beautiful or webinar network. He is fantastic uh, orator and a teacher. In the Maria Alangla Pakum Dia, in my opinion, he is the father of webinars in Tamil Nadu. And I would like to respect him also. Unfortunately, he is not with us anymore. And uh, the other important thing is, I would like to thank, most important thing at the end of the uh, you know, Armiana uh, situation, 50th webinar of IDA Thirunelveli branch. What a milestone. What a milestone. And uh, Bhagavati, sir, as a president, you have given me the greatest honor. I consider this to be an extremely big honor to present uh, the 50th webinar. And uh, my congratulations and uh, my, my heartfelt uh, happiness to you guys. And uh, Arul sir, Arul sir, Pramadama harness for nice one And I also appreciate the efforts of Dr. Prabhagaran, who is the convener. This team has really, really done a fantastic job. 50th webinar. And uh, as such, Ippapaya Patna, almost about 150 people are attending this. The regular conventional state conference, I am so very surprised. I am extremely surprised that you have done a, such a wonderful, uh, humongous uh, job. It's a Himalayan task for you to achieve this. And I must thank the Johnson Thambi also for uh, inviting me. And I would like to thank the listeners also. I hope I'll, I'll be able to entertain you for the next about 30 to 35 minutes without boring much. Actually, I was going to say, you know, 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 Actually, I just want to ask you, but I'm very, very happy that all of you are attending this webinar. I'm so happy for all of you. And I take a lot of pride uh, in presenting uh, this particular webinar to all of you. You have to listen to me. And I'm going to show you only one case. Whatever case, I don't want to bore you because 50 webinars is not a joke. And uh, there is no more than 50 topics to discuss in dentistry. And all the 50 important topics which are useful for practitioners, you would have already done. 
அதை நீங்க நல்லா பார்த்து பதமா அரைச்சிருக்கணும் இல்லையா மட்டும் சொல்லுங்க போதும் சரியா சோ லெட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆல் ஓவர் அகேன் முதல்ல இருந்து ஆரம்பிக்கலாம் கணக்க சோ ஐம் கோனி பி டாக்கிங் அபவுட் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் பேஷன் இவர் பட்டும் மட்டும் தான் பேச போறேன் இந்த பேஷன் இப்படிதான் வந்தாரு வித் அ வெரி கொலாப்ஸ் வெர்டிகல் டைமென்ஷன் அண்ட் ரைட் சைடு லெப்ட் சைடு சைட் வியூ பார்த்தோம்னா இட் இஸ் சூடோ கிளாஸ் த்ரீ ஆர் ப்ரோக்னாத்திக் மேண்டவ் intra oral picture is this multiple caries lesion lots of loss of teeth and there is collapse of vertical dimension totally the patient's difficulty enna abuna he was not able to eat appearance was not very comfortable and uh, most important thing is that he is a, 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 an important person who, who lives abroad and he wants to have a better smile that was the major reason முடிஞ்சா சாப்பிட முடியா நல்லது பட் முக்கியமா எனக்கு அப்பியரன்ஸ் தான் வேணும் அப்படின்னு கேட்டார் ஐ வாஸ் வெரி இம்ப்ரெஸ் வித் இஸ் ரெக்வயர்மெண்ட் so he landed with me and this is this lower denture or lower dentition severe attrition all over a close up view uh, almost uh, multiple uh, caries and almost all the teeth and he wanted to have a good restoration with which he will be able to smile this is the intra oh, i mean uh, opg of this particular patient so i we wanted to plan a uh, treatment so that uh, uh, you know he is comfortable and we will be able to achieve whatever that he wanted that was the basic idea so and he gave us a time frame of about 4 months time adukulla mudikkunnaru so we started working on this particular thing. so why i took up this particular case for presentation is because this is a, a multi specialty uh, case where a lot of specialists got involved and then we worked together to uh, come across uh, a, a relatively good successful treatment plan so clinical signs and symptoms very few teeth were remaining and the meedi rendu moonu palla kuda most of the teeth were badly mutilated there was not much of uh, tooth structure and uh, there was a reduced vertical dimension and uh, uh, you know that has led to a uh, a pseudo class 3 situation and a premature senile look he was as old as uh, i am i am i am almost about 60 and then he was just looking almost 70 because of his uh, collapsed vertical dimension his uh, complaint was also inability to eat and he felt the appearance was not all that comfortable and uh, he was not very happy smile so what was the treatment plan the first treatment plan was to relieve him of the pain and infection so disease elimination is the most important thing so we tried to eliminate the disease and the second thing that we thought of was to restore the existing teeth increase the vertical dimension develop a new horizontal relationship and replace teeth to a functional occlusion at the end of the day we will achieve good occlusion improve masticating a masticatory function and most important thing is the appearance will also get uh, improved along with it so it is incidental that we are, uh, we are we are getting an improved uh, appearance so i asked to ask the patient to bite at centric and measured the inter uh, gingival uh, height it was hardly about 8 mm and uh, how to increase the vertical dimension there are lots and lots of articles i am sure there would have been lots of webinars or also in that so i don't want to go into details but in my opinion vertical dimension na or 5 mm or 6 mm so increase panna patient onnu setu poyira maatare and the patient will be quite comfortable and by increased vertical dimension and getting a positive occlusion the patient will be able to survive very well without any tmj pain there will be a stretch of muscle which may give some pain for some time after which the pain the patient will be very very comfortable i foresee no complication by increasing the vertical dimension by about 5 to 6 mm so i wanted to increase the vertical dimension is this the right method there are about four different methods of doing it 
and this is one of the methods anthropometric measure vachu path pannikalam allad you want to see uh, the closest speaking space vachu pannanuma adhu pannikalam alla venda enak i want to have aesthetics as a consideration na extra worldly we can take into consideration also so maybe out of these four measurements or four methods you choose one or two and then get into an average and then start working so i always prefer this because there is a numerical value i have a numerical value if on the yum 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 un sollum bodu there is a light possibility of aberration this way or that way by about 1 mm yum sollum bodu nirthinga appadum bodu takkunu oru maathi kadipaaru so normally this is what we come across as a clinical practice so i want to have a numerical value so i measure the distance between the highest zenith of the maxillary upper central and the mandibular central and then i noted it as about 8 mm and i want to increase so i kept a wafer of wax and increased it to almost about 12 and then almost increased it a little more to bring it to almost about 16 or 15 mm 15 mm pona prama patient should look like a human being should he should not look like a horse naaya manushan mari vanda kudare mari aakidiyan solla koodadhu the patient aganaala i want to see the external appearance also so this is how he looked before the collapse that is before increasing the vertical dimension after increasing by about say 4 mm after increasing by about 6 to 7 mm so moonathla you whichever is comfortable for you you could have taken into consideration i felt on the right side the patient looked like a human being and uh, i wanted to take that as the uh, normal value because aesthetics and anthropometric rent measuring paathute on an average it looks all right i asked the patient whether he is comfortable after using or biting on this for, for about 15 20 minutes he says no problem doctor i am quite comfortable so what i did i removed the wax bite block and I preserved it in the <clears throat> cold water i already made the impressions my impressions are all ready and with that impression and the model and with this bite rim i articulated this into a simple gaisi simplex articulator <coughs> i used a simple three point articulator gaisi simplex one three point articulator alladhu even the uh, the garriot articulator simple, simple and the garriot articulator can also be used i place the whole thing and i fabricated what is called a lucia jig lucia jig na in this is going to be a jig which is going to be placed in the anterior teeth alone and the anterior mandibular teeth alone will make a contact posteriorly there will be disseclusion so when the patient moves forwards and backwards right side and left side the only guiding force is going to be the musculature and the condylar angle so i wanted to confirm that this is going to be very comfortable particular for the patient so before starting any movement the lucia jig was placed inside the mouth and then i asked the patient to wear it for about 15 20 minutes time so comfortably after about half an hour time i called the patient inside if a half an hour poduma there are a lot of articles which says that you have to keep it for 6 weeks there are a lot of people who keep this lucia jig with a posterior dissolution for about a weeks time and the patient nalla saapada mudiyadu and the patient nalla thanni kudikka mudiyadu it is going to be extremely difficult there are a lot of articles scientific supports to say that even 25 minutes of this lucia jig is more than sufficient to break the engram or uh, you know like re, re, uh, uh, recollect the engram for this uh, neuromuscular system so after about half an hour's time i asked the patient to come inside and then tap what is the trick in this if you going to have a look the upper will exactly fit there will be no problem but lower lumen it is preferable that i have only two contacts either in the lateral lateral or canine canine i would not prefer to have only one contact say in the uh, cent, uh, right central incisor or left central incisor because i would like to have equilibration a four point contact that is right side left side contact and the rendu contact so if there is going to be a four point contact the movement will be much much more smooth if i am not able to get that four point movement i normally build with a small point of composite and i ask the patient to tap like that and ask the patient to move forwards and backwards right and left to get 
this particular tracing. If you're able to see my cursor, you'll be able to see a nice arrowhead tracings here. We're able to see a nice arrowhead tracing here. This is a mirror view of the maxillary, this thing where the Lucy jig is placed with an increased dimension. And I'm able to see the nice uh, 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 arrow point, which is going to be coinciding with the centric. Now I remove the Lucia jig, make a small indentation or a small depression at the arrow head, where all the, the moon line is there at the chinna or your depression. Depression button put it to I take a bite. I normally don't use bite registration paste when there are a lot of teeth missing. So I normally use a putty index or I use a lab putty also. Lab putty is also absolutely good enough. I'm very comfortable with lab putty. So I use this. I don't use bite registration paste because I'll be wasting a lot of material. And I transfer this information to an articulator. So this is the articulator, semi-adjustable articulator. If I a semi-adjustable articulator, as a general practitioner, I don't want to use semi-adjustable articulator. No problem. Semi-adjustable articulator, there will be no problem at all. There are lots of literature which says semi-adjustable articulator is only a glorified three-point articulator or a Geisy simplex articulator. There are a few advantages and disadvantages but the best articulator is the mouth. We can always do intraoral adjustments after cementation also. Very, very, very minimal. So as a practitioner, if you go to the articulator with a face bow, I will Face bow is well and good. Articulator is well and good. If you don't have articulator, if you don't have a face bow, there is no need for you to Buy this immediately to do this particular case. Fine. So I uh, mounted this into the articulator and gave it to the technician. Technician, what he did, he just took a scan of the whole thing. So remember in the patient, grind I only made the measurements. I only increased the vertical dimension. I have not done anything at all. So with this, uh, you know, like a physical model. My technician converted that into a digital model and he may, he gave us the virtual temporaries. This is the virtual temporary. And I asked him how it is going to look like. This is a very, very important thing because I'm going to show this to the patient. This is how you're going to look. There is a lot of acceptance from the patient. You are able to visually give you something which makes the patient accept your treatment planning. And I feel it is an excellent tool. So I check the occlusion on the right side. I check the occlusion on the left side in the virtual model and the virtual processes. And I tell them, okay, go ahead with milling in a PMMA. So the whole thing was milled in a PMMA. I did not want a full arch to be extended. Wherever there is support, you kindly gave me the temporary that is enough so that you will have an assessment of increase in vertical dimension, assessment of aesthetics. And the problem the patient had come, so I would just want to assess this. So I asked the technician to mill this in PMMA, an upper and lower PMMA was given to me. And this is how it was fitted in the oral cavity. There was a little bit of problem in fitting. We have to do a little bit of adjustments, but this is how it fitted in the oral cavity. It was just a snap fit. We did not use any cement at all in this particular case. So what we did, just remove a little bit of uh, uh, undercuts here and there. Tabac, like a snap fit, it went in like an aesthetic crown for Hollywood, the, what they call it as a Hollywood crown. It just went in and I asked the patient as to how he felt and this is how it looked after increasing the vertical dimension and after getting the correct horizontal position. So there is no pseudo class three situation. There is a good increase in vertical dimension. And look at the retro uh, position of the mandible.
from a class three situation, it has almost come to a class one situation. So the class three mare premature senile are in the position. The mandible has rotated itself backwards into the correct position. And I was quite happy about the position of the mandible now. Look at it, it's very, very clear. From class three, after increasing the vertical dimension, there is a rotation of the mandible, which is going to give a real class one situation. And the patient is pretty happy. I'm quite happy with the smile of that particular patient. There is a little bit of obliteration of uh, uh, buccal corridor space on the left side, primarily because on the right side, it is much bigger. That could be the reason why I thought I will not work on the right side by adding few more teeth, acrylic teeth, kadicha I didn't want to discourage. Whenever we are giving a temporary, you give something which is really good, number one. Number two, you give which will not break. The patient is It is impossible for us to tell the temporary they will lose their confidence. So whenever you want to give a temporary, please don't give any cantilever. It is preferable they have a tooth support so that they don't have any possibility of breakage. And this absolutely looked all right. With this as the prosthesis, I left him alone for about four weeks. In this four weeks, I did the rest of the things. I will tell you what are the things that I did. But in this four weeks, I was able to assess whether the patient was able to eat well, whether there is any pain in the musculature or whether there is any pain in the TMJ. So first and the foremost was there was no pain. There's a very minimal discomfort because of the muscle stretching, which was tolerated very well by the patient with a little bit of hot fermentation externally. For about two, three days time, he was complaining after that. It became absolutely all right. So I was quite happy about the whole thing also. So next, I wanted to uh, uh, do the endodontic treatment. I'm not an endodontist. I have uh, an endodontic uh, uh, consultant who comes for me and then she did a very, very good job. I was very, very happy with the endodontic treatment. Now I have to make a mention here that the endodontic treatment per se has really, really gone to a very high standards. Thanks to the efforts of a lot of people. Munala endodontist now a silver point. Even that is successful. My consultant a long time back was one Dr. Lakshmi Narayan. I don't know whether you guys know them or not. Lakshmi Narayan is a senior man, very, very nice man, extremely uh, jovial person. Our one day he used to have only silver point, single visit, narrow road, single point, put what 30 years, 25 years later, the patient come back with no complaints, no periapical pathology. In the very beautiful, I would have a silver point for it. Those things are still working absolutely fine. But now, the science has developed so much thanks to the leading endodontist. They are all exceptionally great uh, endodontists. They are teaching so much. I am so very proud of all those uh, boys who are doing like Pradeep. All those guys are exceptionally good endodontists. They are doing a great job on endodontics. So now endodontic treatment is becoming more and more predictable. To a large extent, we are able to salvage the teeth. So thanks to my endodontists who did a great job. And then this is what I received from her after about a couple of weeks time. She did root canals for all these teeth. And uh, here I have to also make a mention about another boy called uh, Balaji. Balaji and Suresh uh, Kumar. Uh, 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 oh my God, I forgot his name. But our Lakura, they are doing an exceptionally great job. Some time back, I'm talking about 15, 20 years back when I started lecturing. I used to see cases from down south saying, oh, you are not going to be able to do anything. You are not going to be able to do a preconceived thing. And uh, you guys have really proved all these things are nonsense. You are as good as any international standard uh, dentist. I am so very happy and proud that 
all the people from the south are doing so very very well and south has become the 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 the, the, the treasure of best dentists possible and i really really appreciate all the efforts of the dentists here so now i have to plan the implants so in the problem implant on the right side i have only about 4 mm on the left side i have only 2 mm so ungu urla oru therukkar kamala shankar nu oru bayangaramana oru implantologist avar yo all the johnson thambi kootrundana he would have done a lot of sinus lift johnson thambi kootrundana he would have given naal oru zygoma potu potu mudiche poite irpar but uh, i had a lot of reservations for only one reason reservation ena enak theriyadha tha reservation that is only reservation enak therinja na pannittu poi irpane avangala mari ena nalla panna mudiyala so i wanted to do for some other alternatives so i just plan inda pakkam oru moon implant inda pakkam ore ore implant plan panni pannalan paatha the size of the implant available is 4 and 3 mm i was not able to uh, convince myself that an, a conventional implant can go there fine so now i thought okay what are all the possible treatment for a diffusion maxilla sinus grafting i can do a sinus grafting <clears throat> as an indirect procedure or a direct procedure wait for some time and then go for a conventional or go for a zygomatic implant alle enakku butti kediyadu i am not trained in that i have been wanting to train especially by johnson thambi but i am i was unfortunate as not able to join his courses vertical augmentation i am i am okay comfortable with vertical augmentations taking block grafts i am very comfortable with that but uh, i was very reluctant and uh, the last choice is removable prosthesis that uh, patient was not willing for so uh, uh, we have to change or uh, choose between this six so sinus grafting direct open bunny you can always uh, go for a direct sinus lift or you can also go for uh, intentionally inclined implant like in all on four situations and uh, i was also not very keen about it because they were teeth good teeth i didn't want to remove good teeth and then place i always as a prosthodontist want to salvage as many teeth as possible and zygoma the dream uh, implant of my uh, uh, my my practice and especially i really want to learn this from johnson if he is going to give me an opportunity so this is i am not trained so i did not think of this also vertical augmentation i was very comfortable but i don't want to do another surgery in the mandible and then transport grafts there so i thought okay common enna namba konnu onna direct sinus lift all the indirect sinus lift but direct sinus lift kurtana the patient is not going to be waiting for uh, two more months for healing indirect sinus lift i have only about 2 mm on the left side nikumo nikado theriyadu so intentional incline not possible so what is the uh, <clears throat> probable uh, complications direct sinus lift what are enna complication give us pat the greatest complication is always a tear tear vanda are you qualified to manage this yes i am qualified to manage this so nalla irukiradhu onnu eduthu kilichittu enala manage panna mudiyondrathukku எனக்கு என்ன புத்திசாலித்தனமாக தோணல தட் இஸ் வாட் வி யூஸ் டு டூ வென் விர் ஹவுஸ் ஏஜென்ஸ் வென் வி ஐ வென் ஐ வாஸ் அ ஹவுஸ் ஏஜென் இன் நைன்டீன் வாட் வி டூ இஸ் எங்களுக்கு அந்த ஓப்பன் மெத்தட் வி கால் ட்ரான்ஸ் ஆல்யூவல் ஆர் எக்ஸ்ட்ராக்ஷன் அப்படி சொன்னா தான் உங்களுக்கு புரியும் எங்களுக்குலாம் நாங்களாம் ஓப்பன் மெத்தட் சுதர்ஷன் சார்லாம் எங்களுக்கு சொல்லி கொடுத்துருக்காரு ஸோ ஓப்பன் மெத்தட் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க அதை ஸோ வேர்ன்ட்டே பல்ல ஒடிச்சுட்டு ட்ரான்ஸ் ஆல்யூவல் ஆர் எக்ஸ்ட்ராக்ஷன் அவங்க அவங்க பிஜி பண்ணிட்டு இருந்தாங்க அவர்லாம் ஸோ அவர் சொல்லி கொடுப்பாரு ஸோ வி யூஸ் அசிஸ்டன்ட் லேர்ன் அது எவ்வளவு ஒரு முள்ளமாரித்தனம்னு இப்பதான் தோருது எவ்வளவு மோசமான ஒரு செயல் ஒருத்தருக்கு வலி கொடுத்துட்டு நம்ம கத்துக்கணுன்றதுக்காக பண்ணதெல்லாம் ரொம்ப அராகஜமான செயல் ஸோ தட் இஸ் வாட் ஐ ஆல்சோ ஃபெல் அ டைரக்ட் சைனஸ் லிஃப்ட் இஸ் அ ஹியூஜ் பிளண்ட் ஐ ரியலி ரியலி டோன்ட் வாண்ட் டு டூ சச் அ ஹியூஜ் ட்ராமா டு த மேக்ஸ்ல அண்ட் மோர் ஓவர் சின் கேசர் இஸ் கோன் டு பி அ டேர் இட் இஸ் கோன் டு பி மச் மச் மோர் கிரேட்டர் ஒஃபென்ஸ் ஸோ the drawbacks for the morbidity treatment time addition cost and this is what it is i the, the morbidity is very very high i have to take a a a a, a donor place if you going to do a sinus grafting i must have some originous bones so i have to take some from somewhere else from from the ramers or from the adjacent area it is going to have an increased treatment time and it is going to cost more and most important is difficulty in procedure 
சொதப்புறத்துக்கு நிறைய நிறைய ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டிகள் இருக்கு என்னதான் கேர்ஃபுல்லா பண்ணாலும் தேர் இஸ் அ பிரைட் பாசிபிள் நடுவில் ஒரு செப்டம் வந்துச்சுன்னா சொதப்பல் நம்மளால ஐ ஆம் நாட் அ நோரல் சர்ஜன் ஐ ஆம் ப்ராசட் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஃபைன் ஐ ஆம் வெரி 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 டெலிஜென்ட் ப்ராசட் ஆர்டிஸ்ட் ஐ டூ அ வெரி வெரி கேர்ஃபுல் சர்ஜிக்கல் ப்ரொசீஜர்ஸ் இருந்தாலும் தப்பு நடக்கிறதுக்கு நிறைய வாய்ப்புகள் இருக்கு So, is there a reliable alternative? I was thinking, oh, why not we think in terms of a reliable alternative? The reliable alternative, I thought, was the, why not we go in for a short implant? A short implant of about 6 millimeters will be very, very ideal, I thought. Short implants, we always have a reservation. 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 There is always a fear. There is always a reservation to use a short implant. So what is a short implant? Short implant is one which has got an intra-bony length of about 68 millimeters. And normally it is 6 millimeters. If you have 8 millimeters short implant, you can use it. It is only 6 millimeters which is supposed to be an ideal uh, uh, short implant classification. If it is less than 6 millimeters, say if it is 4 millimeters, it is an ultra short. மைக்ரோஸ்ட்ரக்சர் <coughs> uh endopore endopore it's called endopore which was a long time back it is a press fit implant long time back it was available short implant 8 mm and it has to be tapped inside in place and it has got a lot of small cylindrical surfaces which is supposed to enhance a good uh, uh, osseo integration but unfortunately this went out dated <clears throat> because the minute there is a little bit of dehiscence this micropore absorbed a lot of bacteria and this was a cause for failure the second is <clears throat> which is very very commonly uh, used is this bicon implants which is like a football which is like a ball is also 6 to 8 mm the bio, uh, biomechanics is so very good that adaptation is very good the fins or or the the thread design is such that there is a good engagement of the thread into the bone and this also seems to be working fine lots and lots of paper and the third which is very very good is again from stroman which is a single stage implant with four to six threads depending upon either it's four or six millimeters the single stage implant they don't have a short implant with a, a, a with a two stage with that is the 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 the, the infra bony implant implantable material is not till the neck you have a transmucosal extension here which is a uh, very typical of the iti design and they have it in short implant this is also very very uh, uh, extensively used in the literature the fourth one is this which is almost cylindrical like a barrel and this is from Luke, from nucleus and i feel this is very comfortable for me i'm able to use this very extensively in my practice and the other one is a typical a uh, root formed implant with a conical um, configuration which is about 68 mm in length and the procedure is just the same armamentarium is the same but in all these the rest of things especially with this nucleus pre tapping is required but for that all these things are almost the same so what is the myth about the short implants the myth is their success rate i can give you tons and tons of uh literature to support the success rate of short is as good as or as comparable as with the conventional long implants stress distribution say crown root ratio seri irukade crown to implant ratio seriya irukade apdina crown root ratio is applicable only for tooth and crown in the law anti is law all those things is applicable only for tooth to crown and not implant to crown அப்படி பார்க்க போனா ஒரு எல்ஐசி பில்டிங் ஒரு நூறு அடி தளத்துக்கு மேல தேக்குனா 
and uh, the crestal bone loss is much more greater which is again not uh, a reality it is only a myth because the crestal bone loss is almost equal to that of any other uh, uh, implant systems and the most important thing is the mental makeup the human factor there is always a, 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 an apprehension whether this particular small implant will get engaged. There are a few tricks like an under osteotomy and things like that which will help which a, a seasoned implantologist will be able to um, assess but if you're going to do one or two cases I'm sure you will also become a seasoned implantologist. So what I did was I just placed three on the right side and one on the left side. And the one on the left side was about six millimeters and all the, this are also six millimeters. I did not do a sinus lift in this. Remember, even an internal sinus lift was not done. I just raised the flap and I did an osteotomy for about two millimeters, guided osteotomy for two millimeters. The diameter of the implants was six millimeters my osteotomy was only 4.2 millimeters and I slowly drove in so that the sinus floor lifted all by itself along with this. So what is the criteria? No graft membrane at all whatsoever. On the mesial of the single implant, there were more bone contact. On the distal, there's hardly any bone contact at all. So what I did was slowly I rest, slowly I gave a turn so that it the, the membrane also lifted. What I expected was the blood to flow in between the lifted periosteum or lifted the membrane and the implant. And I expected the bone to form normally. And I searched for literature and literature also said, even when there is no bone graft and just a clot stabilization can form in the sinus with just a pical implant placement. That meaning to say that even if you're going to raise the floor of the implant, uh, I raised the floor of the sinus by about three to four millimeters. Bone forms even in the absence of a graft material. So why I came to this conclusion was in one of the cases, we placed a direct sinus lift and we placed uh, an autogenous bone mixed with a synthetic bone. And unfortunately, after about four months time, the whole graft was lost and I had nothing to explain to the patient. And I felt really sad about the whole thing and we tried the short implant and it worked absolutely fine. So I convinced myself that this is a very viable uh, treatment option and I started working on this. I have quite a number of cases of the short implants. So I raised and placed all the four implants, waited for osteointegration for about three months time. I also simultaneously removed the tooth there and placed an implant on the left side. Conventional root form, 13 millimeter implant, quite safe there is no problem at all whatsoever and i wanted to gain the axial length for the rest of the teeth so after the root canal treatment uh, uh, after the implant placement i <clears throat> prepared the radicular area made the impressions gave it to the uh, technician and i'm uh, basically a cast postman i like metal i don't want to do in these cases where i would like to have a long term success, I do not want to, uh, you know, like uh, uh, give a prefabricated post and then uh, build up the core with composites and things like that doesn't work in my hands. Unfortunately, it may work in somebody else's hands, but most often it doesn't work in my hands. I'm very unhappy about the whole thing. So I went in for cast post. I went in for about seven cast posts, maxilla about five in the mandible. And uh, uh, I removed the unwanted teeth and this is how I was able to get the adaptation of the caspos. And caspos went on, went on very well. I increased the axial length. I was very sure about the retention capabilities of my restorations. So this is how it looked, both maxilla and mandible. Posteriorly, if you're able to see, there's a small cover screw abscess like this on the, on the right side. Posterior, you're able to see a small abscess. It's a cover screw abscess, not a not an infection from the implant. So after cementation, I made a conventional uh, impression procedures and I gave a coping trial. During the coping trial, this fracture, which again, we changed. Other mistake that I did in this was that whenever we are doing individual copings, I would prefer them to be individual crowns 
rather than a set of three and especially midline opening. Midline opening is not a very great idea for the maxilla. Midline opening in the mandible is okay. Midline sectioning in the maxilla is not a great idea because the forces of occlusion are always transverse like this. That is, there is a centrifugal force which will allow our forces to get out of center. That means there is a possibility of midline opening. So I was not very happy about this. Just change the coping and then try the coping in the mandible also. This is how the coping fitted in the oral cavity. The mandible are single <coughs> uh, uh, unsectioned. Uh, and this is how it looked. Mandible and maxilla. And the final prosthesis was cemented in place. The prosthesis, which is made out of uh, the zirconium uh, uh, layered uh, uh, material, I wanted to use this primarily. I didn't want to go in for metal ceramic because for two reasons, for aesthetics, number one. Number two, I, <clears throat> the, the occlusion was so close. I really, really didn't want to uh, venture for metal ceramic, possibly because the possible uh, causes of uh, uh, metal debonding. So that is the reason why I, I did not go in for this. I went in for this particular zirconium and I was able to complete the case. So all the prepped teeth, I was able to give a crown. And this is how it looked. And after about three months time, I did notice a little bit of bone formation around the implants and conventional procedure of making an impression for the uh, <clears throat> implant uh, supported prosthesis on the right and the left side. And I gave a metal trine for the maxilla and I gave the metal trine so to check whether there is enough clearance. I took a bite with the uh, pattern resin and uh, this is how it looked on the left side. The gingiva were quite matured and then they, they were looking absolutely fine. No signs of infection of the existing crown that has been fitted. And I fitted the screw reading prosthesis on all these cases wherever I have placed the implant. On the right side, I used a fused crown. I engaged all the three. Whereas on the left side, I gave an individual crown on the left maxilla and the left mandible. The patient came back after three weeks with a complaint of mobility. He said, Dr. Pallu Adhudu, ayyayyu, amma annamari sallu kudadhe, andamani annamari unna ava kudadhe, avri nana chikita, I just called him back. Then I was thinking that the short implant would have failed. But unfortunately, the conventional implant failed in my particular case. Basically, it is my mistake, it is absolutely my mistake. When I assess the uh, x-rays closely, I have not seated my thread fully inside and there was a premature interference on the distal surface of the implant support prosthesis, which has resulted in undue forces and lateral forces, which has created in the failure of this implant. And immediately I removed the implant, replaced it with the, uh, another system also and gave a prosthesis. And this is how the patient looked after the prosthesis was cemented in or screwed in or you know like driven in or with the help of a screw uh, on the implant side on the right side the occlusal view and you're able to appreciate the change i use a stroman this time i didn't want to go in for failure again so i use a stroman wide 4.8 millimeters into 10 millimeters 13 millimeters and then the patient now is very comfortable so this is with this particular case so I started with almost reduced vertical dimension. I did the whole uh, endodontic. I took the help of the endodontics. I took the help of uh, you know the periodontist also to some extent to give a little bit of uh, uh, gingival contouring. I took the help of an oral surgeon to remove all the uh, 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 unwanted uh, teeth, and I placed the implant myself and I gave the prosthesis. So it's a good multidisciplinary case, and I was very happy with the whole. Uh, outcome of the this thing. The last series, that is you guys, the youngsters. I mean, I don't want to call myself young, though WHO says that 60 is an young age. I don't want to call myself young, but I'm only bothered. I'm only concerned about the youngsters between the age of 30 and uh, 45, 50, 55. They are going to ask me, 
ஆட தொடங்க போறோம் when are we going to start all this game this is my concern with the next generation my next generation is about 10 years younger than me guys so the first question that i want you to ask yourself after this covid i don't know about your place how many how many active cases are there other whether the active cases are really active or inactive we don't know but in chennai poram vara ella covid ellarkume covid so and the bagam thirumna covid and the bagam thirumna adu ellarkume covid so i ask myself why should we start practice nalla nalla thana irukku vela velai soor kedikudhu nalla madhyana thoonga mudiyudhu saayangala one or two large poda mudiyudhu idhukku mela enna one vaalkai onnume thevai kediyadhu peer pressure summa irupangala nama friends phone panni you know na start pandra nee start pannalaya so peer pressure is very very high everybody surrounding you are started practice should you have to really start practice are you susceptible to this disease this is not a life threatening disease 0.1% of the patients die so you can be the 0.1% adu oru manasla vechikka vendi tha so enna pandrom ava start pannatana namba start pannanum ivum pannatana namba pannanum so ipo namm ellarume anniki narsimha varadhuvaji oru webinar pannaru adula vande enadhu ஊர் மக்கள் ரெண்டா போயிட்டா கூத்தாடி கொண்டாட்டம் அது மாதிரி நம்ம எல்லாம் ஒருத்தர் ஒருத்தர் நம்ம ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணணும் நீ ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணணும் அவங்க வந்து இந்த டீலர் கீழருக்குலாம் சகட்டு மீனுக்கு ரெண்டாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு ரூபா மூவாயிரத்தி ஐநூறு ரூபா அப்படின்னு கரெக்டா ஒரு வாரம் ஏதாச்சும் ஆயிரத்தி நூறு ரூபா அப்படின்னு ஒரு ஒரு பத்து நாள் போனா எல்லாம் ஃப்ரீயாவே எடுத்துங்க சார் இப்ப கத்திரிக்காய் எல்லாம் ரோட்ல விவசாயம் பண்ணிட்டு ரோட்ல கொட்டுறாங்களா அந்த மாதிரி இந்த பிபி எல்லாம் ரோட்ல கொட்ட போறாங்கன்னு நினைக்கிறேன் பட் எனிவே திஸ் இஸ் வாட் இஸ் கோட் ஹேப்பி ரெண்டாவது காரணம் ஒய் ஐ மஸ்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் பிராக்டிஸ் பேஷண்ட் ஓடி போயிடுவாங்களா போக மாட்டாங்க ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் ஃபிஃப்டி பர்சன்ட் போக மாட்டாங்க உனக்கு இருக்கிற பேஷன் உனக்கு தான் எனக்கு இருக்கிற பேஷன் எனக்கு தான் சரி எனக்கு இருக்கிற பேஷன் உனக்கு வந்தா ரொம்ப சந்தோஷம் ஏன்னா நீ எனக்கு நண்பன் நீ வந்து சாப்பிட்டு போ நான் அல்லது நான் சாப்பிட்டு போறேன் ஐ எம் வெரி ஹாப்பி இஃப் த பேஷன் இஸ் கோயிங் டு மை ஃப்ரெண்ட் நோ ப்ராப்ளம் மட்டால் அப்சலூட்லி நோ ப்ராப்ளம் மட்டால் பிகாஸ் தேஷன் வில் பேட் மவுத் மீ அவர் பார்க்கவே மாட்டேங்கிறார் அப்படின்னு சொல்லலாம் அல்ல இல்ல அவருக்கு இந்த மாதிரி இந்த மாதிரி சுச்சுவேஷன் அவரால் பார்க்க முடியாது அதனால நான் அவர் மாதிரி நான் பார்க்கறேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு நீ பார்க்க போற ஐம் கோயிண்ட் பி வெரி ஹாப்பி நீ சம்பாதிக்க போற ஐ எம் ஆல்சோ கோயிண்ட் பி வெரி ஹாப்பி சொல்லுங்க sir some of other state members also is there they are not understanding like that no <laughs> problem sir don't worry so if 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 the patient is going to run away from you no problem at all absolutely no problem at all the patient will not run away your patient is going to be yours my patient is going to be mine so no problem uh, we can always get back even if the patient goes to my best friend i'm happy that he is making money what is the third reason the meyal me i don't have money really i don't have money i have to make money fine that's a very valid valid reason i have few loans i have my house loan i have a car loan i got a bench now so i have to pay uh, my emi i have got a huge flat of 2600 square feet i have to pay 1 lakh i have to make money fine you can take the risk in that particular situation but do not take the risk just to satisfy somebody else's ego peer pressure now you just because your friend has started please do not start your practice take wait for the whole thing to settle down especially people in chennai i don't want them to start as early as tomorrow day after wait for a week time there's nothing wrong the other reason for you to start is patient has got emergency what emergency you are, the patient can have to take fine open up the thing the pain will reduce you don't have to use even aerosol you can use a micro motor and then open up that is only emergency emergency could be orthodontic wire emergency could be half bridge coming out the rest is poking into the tongue these are all the emergency there is no other emergency there is no need for you to create an emergency to say that you have to place an implant implant immediately that is emergency for you not for him so remember that whether you have to start the practice or not so if you are convinced yes i have to start the practice in all this there is only one reason my emis are choking me i have to start that's a good valid reason you can start the practice there is no problem at all the minute you want to start the practice what's happening there are lots of guidelines look at the guidelines the guidelines are so very many and every day it changes yesterday they say they do uh, use uh, sodium hypochlorite today the sodium chloride is not of any use so every day it changes 
I don't blame the scientists. I don't blame the people who read and tell all these things. I, I have to appreciate Gopi Krishna and uh, uh, his team and also uh, Narasimha Bharadwaj for giving a lot of uh, insight and awareness about this COVID and how to protect our clinic. May they, because they read a lot about this and then try to dissipate it in such a way that we'll be able to follow. The guideline is almost a ton heavy. So what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to do all these things. Everywhere, the whole street will be wearing PPE before you start an aerosol procedure. Do you really want to do this? So calculate, there are about 10 people in your office. Your PPE or in N95 mask, your shield, your head cap, your shoe cover, <clears throat> and all these things without AC is going to cost you something. And for one addition of a crown, even for re cementation of crown, unfortunately, you have to wear all these things. If you're going to wear all these things, and if you're going to do a re cementation, do your math whether the money that you have invested and what you're going to get is going to compensate. Otherwise, you can always speak to the patient very politely and nicely and still gain the confidence and hold the patients on with you. I think that is very, very important. Do your math. Is it worthwhile spending such a lot of money? This is not the end. We have to buy the UV light. I have to buy a HEPA filter. I have to buy a sprayer. There are lots and lots of things. It is almost coming to about two to two and a half lakhs. And <clears throat> whether all these things are going to be useful in the future is a question. But you can put them into use also. Fine. So what is the impact on dental health care service? Will the health care service be affected? Right? So there is going to be a paradigm shift in the treatment protocol. From tomorrow onwards, what is going to be happening? There's going to be a huge change in the thinking of the treatment protocol. Nobody is going to talk about just one filling in the anterior tooth, one filling in the posterior tooth. Everybody will start thinking in terms of your collective or a comprehensive treatment planning. And it starts with level one where you have only a restorative dentist uh, working on this particular case. A level two where a periodontist and a, 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 a respiratory dentist or a, a, a general dentist work on this. And after some time, we are a level three, a more complication where you have to increase the vertical dimension and regain the lost uh, engram. That is going to be level three. And level four, there's going to be surgery also involved implantologists, periodontologists, and the prosthodontists and the general dentist will come into play together to go into level four. And the <clears throat> level five people will, where an orthodontist will also come in for one single particular bit. There'll be five or six specialties who will be going in to get the final restorations done. And in level six, where orthodontic surgery will also great people of your, uh, of your town, like uh, Basker and all those people. Basker is an excellent surgeon. I have to essentially talk about these guys because uh, Basker, uh, as I know him, as a, he was my junior by about three or two years. Excellent, uh, studious chap, extremely jovial man. I never expected this guy to do such a lovely job in his practice. I'm so very proud that I'm his friend. And he has done a great contribution to the field of oral surgery. If at all he is there, I would like to congratulate him in this public forum so that I, it's a great opportunity for me to appreciate him in this public forum. So oral surgeons will also come into play. So there's going to be a different level of treatment for <clears throat> different cases and different people will come into play. So there is going to be a paradigm shift in the treatment protocols and depending upon the severity of the condition, lots and lots of specialists will group together and start working. So upper, what is going to be the future of the single and two chair? You mean to say we may have to close these shops? No, not at all. You guys will also flourish. So in the, in the, in the, in the picture, yeah, poor time. so this is only for people who speak Tamil. Please forgive me for this. So for people who are in a one and two chair clinic, so you, have, you need not have to close your show. There is no need for you to close your show. You, what will happen, this will also flourish. How will they flourish? You as a dentist will start developing more and more skills. 
you will give the best of your treatment uh, to your, your, your patient. You will spend more time, you will spend more time learning the best techniques and you will deliver very good dentistry. That means there is going to be a, a, a really upliftment of standards of dentistry from you one and two chair practice dentists. Two or three of you together will form another unit and may form a multi-specialty clinic where you will be able to cater to the lead of a lot of other uh, uh, patients. And this is going to be a specialty center. So three or four will go join together, like-minded people will join together, same age group will join together, and you're going to pool all your skills to dissipate good dentistry. Worse come worse, the losers, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe, if the pressure of the finances are going to be very heavy, those people may sell their clinic to corporates, uh, like, you know, like the Wasson, Beeson, all those people are there, they will buy over your clinic, and you will still be employed, you will still be a dentist. Unfortunately, you and I don't know anything beyond dentistry. Even tomorrow, I would like to go and start use, uh, 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 you know, like use my land for farming. But I cannot because I don't know farming. I don't know how to, you know, when to sow the seeds, when to reap my fruits. Nothing I know. I don't want to learn at this stage and start working. It is going to be difficult. So if you are not able to do the thing that you have studied for 10 years, practiced for 10 years very well, you mean to say you're going to study for three months and then start working with the farm? It is not going to be possible. It is, it is absolutely not going to be possible. You can start Forming as a small scale, develop skill over the period of time, and then simultaneously run both. But to leave dentistry is no chance at all. All of you have to do dentistry, whether for yourself or at least for another clinic. What will happen to the dental education? Dental education will continue as usual. There's no problem at all. There, all the hundred seats in all the colleges will get filled. PG seats will get filled. There is no problem at all the teaching modality is going to change. There's going to be a hybrid kind of education with lots of webinars, online classes. So that means what a teacher can opt himself to be a full-time teacher, or he can do practice as well as teachers. So you can choose between best of the both sides. You can be a teacher as well as a clinician. You can make uh, enough money here as well as money here. So you will never ever stop. You will make more money than what you are doing presently than staff. The most important thing is students are going to enjoy this. I am not able to believe there are almost about 200 people listening to this stupid fellow's lecture at 8 o'clock in the night on a Monday because you have the time. Not that I'm interesting. It is not that I'm interesting. It is because that you have the time. You said, okay, what is this bloke going to talk? Let me take at least one or two points extra. Fine. So you're going to be spending one hour, you're going to enjoy every part of learning and the teachers will also start enjoying the teaching. What is going to be the short-term effect of this COVID? There's going to be a lot of expense. Depending upon the size of the practice, there is going to be some expenses, inevitable. And as usual, as I told you, the dealers in between will stay, make an absolute uh, uh, profit. It's okay, no problem. They have to also have their living, no problem at all. Second thing is you will start thinking about yourself. You will start thinking about your hygiene. You will start thinking about how well you will be able to maintain yourself and how well you will be able to keep your health in place. So not normally, even, even till about three months back, soon after I come back from the clinic, I will not take a bath. I'll just wash my hands and start eating. I will not even remove my shirt. All these hygiene practices are going to change we are going to become more cleaner and a more perfect hygienic people. So I've seen so many people, even when in, in, the, in the Western countries, they just wear, wear the glove, put it in the oral cavity, and then just, uh, just, they just uh, you know, uh, wipe it on the scrubs. All those things will be there. So hygiene level will really, really improve, and you will start thinking about yourself, your health, and your long living, and also about the people at home. The work culture will improve you are going to give very high standards of dentistry. You're going to really, really going to charge them. You're going to get a lot of money also. The work culture is going to improve. Associates will work very properly. 
because they know if they are not going to do the right job, they will be sacked and somebody else is waiting. The helpers in the clinic, like the chair assistants, I am and all those people will be very grateful because we are taking care of their health also and they'll be able to act more responsibly. What will be the long-term efforts of this on practice? Sterilization protocol will really improve. From now on, everybody will be so very good at sterilization. Nobody will you know, like take any slip shot methods. The protocols will be very clean and it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be thorough by all the people in the clinic. Dentists will deliver high standards of dentistry. Since patients are also aware of this, they will not hesitate to pay. There will be limited hours of work. You cannot, I don't think the people are going to work from, because they have enjoyed this three months of sitting at home and watching TV and spending time with the children and the people at home, they would like to spend more time coming back to the house. So there's going to be a limited amount of work and there's going to be very designated wet and dry room, that is aerosol room, non-aerosol room, so that all the practices is going to be slightly bigger than what it is going to be there. There is going to be a very significant two-room practice at least, one for dry procedures, one for aerosol procedures. Dentists will limit their services to specific areas. They will go for level one and level two, or if, if, if a little enthusiastic people, they will learn new techniques and from level two to level four by learning more techniques. So they will also improve and they'll be very specific about only doing few things in their practice. Most important will be people will ground themselves and become less greedy. They will not grow after money. They'll be going after happiness, which is doing limited amount of dentistry, making enough money to survive and taking care of people at home. And finances. Finances, when it finances, I don't have to essentially teach. So there is no need for me to teach you because each one's financial position is different. So you don't have a common rule to, you know, like say, this is where, how you're supposed to uh, do the finances because uh, it, it differs from individual, individual. So the basic things will be keep your fist tight. Don't be very enthusiastic about spending on uh, uh, new shoes every week. So new equipment, we may have to think in terms of postponing. Uh, I was planning to go in for a CBCT. I was planning to go for uh, digitalized uh, uh, prosthodontics in my practice. So all these things, I will defer it for another about three or four years time. So if at all possible, I'd like you people to clear off the loans as, as, as much as possible. Whenever there is going to be an excess money, prefer to have assets in the form of gold and have limited travel not only to preserve cash, but also to take care of the health and no extravagance. So don't say I am fine saying that internally you are not fine with having a mask in front saying, oh no, I'm fine. I'm sure you are going to be fine. It is just a matter of time. So let's start our clinic all over again, revamp the clinic and revamp our protocols and also think in terms of starting a new life all over again, because I feel life is to be enjoyed. You cannot sit back and always keep saying that, oh, this is calm for the last three months, there is no money, money is not going anywhere. It's only around the corner, all we have to do is go there and pick it up. So as the famous Tamil uh, saying goes, this shall pass too, right? So this too shall pass. This is, this is just a passing cloud and I'm sure you guys are going to be very comfortable very soon in the near future and uh, we will not, I will not see you anymore in the webinars. I'll be seeing you in the conferences where you and I will be able to have <clears throat> something together, maybe a cup of coffee or a bonda or whatever it is so that we will be happy all over. This is what my message is. Just a very, very short period and I would like to thank each one of you and what is going to be the future? Future is going to be bright, absolutely bright. Have no doubt at all about anything. There is going to be absolutely bright. You and I are going to be very happy and I have no reservations at all about this. So with this, I would like to thank the IDA. I would like to thank the uh, president and the secretary and uh, Johnson and all the uh, listeners for a very patient listening. And I hope I made a little bit of sense Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And a special thanks to Johnson and uh, 
uh, uh, all appreciation for the rest of the people and uh, seniors in the branch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Padmanabhan, sir, for your lecture and wishes to Trinavali IDA. And I thank you, everyone, who has helped us to make this webinar series a grand success. I should mention here that the idea of webinar was seeded by Dr. Johnson, sir. And our president and secretary, Arul, sir, took a huge effort to make it a big tree. A special thanks to Dr. Kanaga Sabbaraji, sir, Dr. Alagwell, sir, also, who guided us. And I also thank all the speakers and each and every participants. Hope we helped up all to have some useful time during this lockdown period. Thank you, everyone. Now, uh, sir, uh, any participants who have doubt can ask through the chat box so that the lecturer can ask you. Answer you, sorry. Sir, there are some doubts. Can I read yes, it sir. for you? Please, sir. Sir, will this affect the cost of treatment? Ideally, <clears throat> ideally, it will affect the cost of treatment. In what I am planning to do, I don't know about others. What I am planning to do, I will tell you. I am planning to increase uh, uh, my consultation charges only, not the treatment charges, my consultation charges by around 200 rupees. I am going to give this particular patient uh, material worth almost about 85 to 100 rupees, which will include a, not a PPE, but a, 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 a disposable gown, a head cap, shoe cap, and a glove, which is going to cost me almost about 89 rupees. I'm going to sell it for about 200 rupees. Every time they enter in, they will pay 200 rupees extra. This is what I am planning, but I'm not planning to change or frame my uh, cost of the treatment. Cost of the treatment, if I, if I feel, if you're going to change, maybe increase by about 15%. Taking COVID into consideration, that's not a great idea. Instead, I thought I will just do this. I will wait for the year end and then increase it by about 10%. Normally in my practice, I increase my charges by about 10% every alternate year, almost about 5% every year. That's all. So in that particular case, this is good enough. My opinion, my opinion, absolutely my opinion. Okay, sir. So one more doubt regarding your case presentation. What about this TMJ after rehabilitation, sir? Long-term impact? <clears throat> Long-term impact. Uh, I have cases which are running for almost about 10 years where I've increased the vertical dimension by about, if at all there is going to be a change in the uh, TMJ, there is going to be no bony changes. I expect only neuromuscular changes and muscle extension, which is a short term, immediate ill effect of increasing vertical dimension, which, is, which normally comes down uh, within about three or four weeks. It can come down much more faster if you're going to assist it with a muscle relaxant. But normally the pain is not because of bony interferences or bony contact. It is more because of stretch of the musculature. Okay, sir. One more doubt. Uh, is soft splint advisable after rehab? If so, what would be the duration? Soft splint is absolutely essential after this thing. I... Uh, Thanks to whoever who has raised this particular question. Thank you. I should have mentioned it when I was doing the presentation. I did not mention. Good suggestion. Thank you very much, sir or madam, whoever has suggested this. It is mandatory that we give one jaw a splint because when after we increase the engram, there is a possibility of uh, interferences during the night hours, especially during swallowing. No, it is not bruxing. I'm not talking about bruxing. During sleep, we also swallow. When we swallow, there is contact of maxillary and mandibular teeth. If they are not going to be eccentric, there is a possibility of chipping off the ceramic. So I would always prefer to have a splint, soft splint of about three millimeter thickness, which the patient is going to wear during the night hours only. Okay, sir. So 
thank you haris doctor for asking the doubt thank uh, you haris so, sir thank you very much uh, one more doubt from dr sandhya after the mock restoration from the lab is there any protocol to prepare the tooth in patient's oral cavity or we can just simply prepare ah the protocol is depending upon the increase i in this particular case i increased by about 6 mm so i did not i did not take into consideration reduction of the occlusal surface i did not reduce the occlusal surface in this particular case all the teeth that have been prepared do not have enough axial length <clears throat> there are about 12 teeth there are about 12 teeth uh, i have given a cast pose the rest three or four teeth there was enough tooth material so i used only a reinforcing uh, fiber splint okay i should have not used the word reinforcing i used a fiber post uh, 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 to 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 uh, retain a little bit of core material i increase the vertical height uh, i increase the axial length by about 2 mm on those two teeth but for that all the uh, uh, this thing where all axial uh, increase was done by cast pose the protocol for reduction is occlusal reduction is not required okay sir one more doubt from dr shakti how could we temporize when a post space is prepared post space is prepared yes sir you can always uh, give a temporary uh, you can plug in the hole uh, with a piece of cotton and as in cox original you already have a temporary you can use this temporary and snap it on if the if there is going to be any difficulty if there is going to be any difficulty uh, the ideal thing say not for this particular case for any case for the matter you are going to go into a central incisor say for example you are going to do a central incisor you have the tooth the easiest way by which you will be able to do is to take a lubricant apply on the radicular space apply on the tooth take self curing acrylic take a prefabricated tooth pack it inside and before it sets slightly remove and refix like a shell crown keep removing and refixing the whole thing uh, as it sets it will form a cast post uh, it will form a post by itself and then you will be able to cement it will be very rigidly cemented inside there will be no problem even if you are going to use a temporary cement it is going to be extremely difficult for you to remove so you can make a self cure acrylic post and attach it to a temporary crown it will function very well but you have to be very careful because when you have before it sets you have to keep removing and refixing it otherwise it will get stuck to the tooth structure okay one more doubt sir is it advisable to treat senior citizen on this time in the covid side no 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 uh, no that's also one of the reasons that i am not going to the clinic so <laughs> thing is that <laughs> we are terribly scared the not not scared we are a responsible we are responsible people of the society i don't want my patients to say having come to a clinic i got covid i got rid of the toothache but i got covid i don't want the people to say fine even if they go going to say and they are going to come out of covid it is fine but in case in case something happens out of the way he takes a one way ticket it is going to be extremely difficult to console yourself i mean console the patient it will haunt you for the rest of your life oh why should i start that's the reason why i said unless it is absolutely essential please do not and if at all you want to uh, make sure that you have to do a surgical procedure for an elderly person why don't we just ask the patient to go for a covid test and make take sure make sure that he is negative and then remove the tooth there's no problem at all hello ah hi sir yep so one more doubt from dr rohit uh in the lucia jig you have you place the hole to determine the centric but how will you confirm he has bitten bitten in the same position ah uh, that is the reason why we are making making a depression because when you ask the patient to move back the tooth will go get engaged into this depression he will not be able to move if you are not give, giving a depression what will happen is he may go forwards or backwards that is the reason why in the lucia jig where the arrow point meets you make a small depression so that the tooth will go get engaged the mandibular teeth will go and get engaged in that i showed you a picture where there was a perforation of that bite which is coinciding with the depression that we made this is to check whether that the patient has bitten in the right position otherwise we have to redo the whole bite again so 
the best thing is to check whether the, there is a perforation in the hole. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, there are some thanks notes from uh, various doctors. I will read out the name for you, sir. Uh, thanks from uh, Dr. Kalandar Mastan, Dr. G.P. Kumar, uh, Dr. Johnson Raja, Dr. Shakti, uh, Dr. Maria, Dr. Saravna Kumar, Dr. Sudarshan. Only I must thank them for listening, man. <laughs> only I must thank them. They don't have to thank me at all. As I told you, this is the 50th uh, webinar. All these things they would have learned. I'm only trying to, as I told you, let's start all over again. We just, I just wanted to start all over again. That's it. So I must only thank them. They do not have to thank them. Thank you very much for a very patient listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other doubts from the participants? Any other doubts from the participants? What do you feel about legal implications? Hello? Hi, sir. There is a very good question from Sabrinathan, sir. Oh, Sudarshan, sir. Sudarshan, sir. What is going to be the legal implications? We don't know. We really don't know. So it is preferable. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir, but your voice is breaking a little bit. Oh, really? It is, is it breaking? Am I okay now? Oh, no, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So the legal implication is going to be, uh, uh, there is a possibility. So what I'm going to do is, in my practice, whenever I'm calling my associate dentist and my uh, assistants back to my clinic, I'm going to give them a concern form saying that we are willingly joining, knowing very well that there is a possibility of the same. So all the patients who come in will also sign an undertaking that you are aware and then they are aware of the fact that there is a possibility, but this is not a legal protection, but at least this will, as a first stage, this will be able to protect you from legal implications. If at all you have to go through that, the best thing is to take an indemnity for five lakhs. Almost all the IDA members have an indemnity for about five lakhs. So I don't think there should be any problem. If you do not have indemnity, kindly take one indemnity, which is going to hardly cost about, say about two or three, uh, 3,000 rupees per year for about five lakhs, which is very, very negligible. If you're going to do a group, if you're going to join IDA, it is much, 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 much lesser. Because as a group, they have a good indemnity. I'm sure Dr. Surender or any of the IDA uh, big uh, names will be able to help you on this. Thank you, sir. I requested uh, Johnson, sir. Say a few words. Uh, so thank you, Padma, sir. It was uh, exactly what we expect from you. Some words of uh, advice and uh, encouragement to restart practice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can you, can you, can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I'm able to hear you. Yeah. You only tambi tambi jolly. I'm going to come to you, sir. <laughs> you know, it is very refreshing and I'm sure uh, the 200 plus participants who have joined in today will have been uh, enthralled by hearing your lecture and uh, we look forward to hearing more of this in the coming conferences and a big uh, hats off to the idea general team led by our president Dr. Bhagavadi, Dr. Darul, uh, CD convener uh, Prabha and uh, treasurer Dr. Kannan, it was a wonderful show, 50 webinars, and um, uh, I, I don't know if they're going to carry it forward, but then we have other things to do, lot of programs, so thank you, team. thank you, sir, thank you for all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, thank you for doing uh, President. Hello? Request our President to say your words. Yeah, sure. Yes, Dr. Arul, I'm online. Am I already clear? Yes, yes. Clear. Yes. Clear. Okay. Clear. So thank you very much. It was a very great lecture indeed. We brought Lion for the fifth lecture. That is our right. <laughs> thank you, sir. And thank it was very nice. Actually, you made our CPU into the version 2.0 to get ready for the post-COVID practice. Our CPU is ready to 2.0. 2.0. Thank you, sir. Thank and you. Uh, thank, thank you very much for all the listening. At this juncture, I would like to thank some of the keynote speakers. 
who has given a good lecture all these 50 uh, webinars uh, dr alagwel dr arul dr johnson dr kanasubha sir dr sharan dr kanan dr jaspal dr narasimhan bhatwaj dr shiva sailam dr meenakshi sundaram dr meenakshi dr praveen arul dr priya jansen dr sabinathan dr roshan dr sakti prakash dr kandaswami dr sindhil selvan dr manjunath dr kamala shankar dr prabhu dr murugan dr surendran dr padmanabh sir dr sanesh maikar and we have an international speaker also from egypt dr veil said and many more speakers also we had but little bit of time time lapse please uh, the thanks to the speakers also and for all the members i tenelli members of the bearers and we have got one secretary sir dr arul prakash he is human not in human form whatever you say he will finish it up within 10 minutes that is very important thing about him thank you thanks to all the members for listening and the meeting is adjourned thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you